before you get started working with Responsomatic, you're going to need to register with their site and sign up for an account and all that, which which isn't going to require any kind of credit card information or anything like that. You can later on upgrade to their premium service, whatever, but that's up to you. Um, but I already have an account with them, so I'm going to just log right in. Um, or in case you guys know or not, the name of this model uh, they call this uh, uh, a freemium service they give you something for free and then if you want to upgrade to the premium you pay so that's called freemium in case you're interested um, so now I'm gonna create a form and this is actually the beginning of the form wizard I have one form I could create with them and well here we go so I'm gonna name the form um, give me my bean name that's Basically, the main function of this form is for me to send you your bean name information and also for you to be able to style a form. So, put that name in, create form, and you can go to the first first step, first of three. Well, actually, first of two, and the last step is just to get the code. And step one is, let me see, get this out of here. Uh, step one is just to put in all the questions that you want. Now, the first two that they have over here is what's your name, what's your email address. That works with me. Um, the one thing I'm going to add is I want a drop down menu question. And let's see, drop down box, I'll click that here. And I'm going to answer the, uh, I'm going to write the question. I should say, what is your profession? and then here's going to be a list of them and we'll probably start off with prefer not to say as the first one because the first thing you put in there is going to be the default answer and then we'll put lawyer doctor student unemployed we can only be so un well unlucky um that should just about do it and we are going to want to require this. I think I want to put required over here so people know that this field needs to to happen. And let's do that for these top ones as well. Um, yeah, let's do it that way. It's always good to tell people that it's required. Otherwise, if it's required and they don't know, they may get... I know, you're probably thinking most people won't, but you're, you're designing for everybody, and most doesn't include everybody, so there will be people who get confused. So you always want to be as clear as possible. Um, this kind of... Well, this is kind of bugging me. So if, I put, if I'm putting required on the outside of this question mark, why, why am I putting on the inside of this colon? I'm going to change that. You need some consistency, right? There's no right or wrong to it. Just pick something and stick with it. You know what I mean? So we'll do that. Save it. Um, the other thing we're going to need now is like a short answer question because it's going to be the fruit name and or the rather the bean name. So here's a short answer is going to be my next thing. And what is my bean name? Because you're asking me what mine is. And that's definitely required. So we'll set it up like that. Hit save. What is my B name? Required, required, required. And now we'll add another one. Probably for the last thing, because I want a I want a big box, just something that we could mess around with, is a long answer, and that's gonna be uh, the usual comments that you always see. We won't require that. That should save it. So here's what we got. We got let's just look. We got name, email address, what is your profession, and because we put that one, prefer not to say as the first one, it'll just stay that way. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it'll default to that one. I keep on hitting this, excuse me. Um, and then now, what is my B name? That's what I'm going to end up sending to you, so you can look, refer to the grading matrix, and comments. All right, I think that's about enough. Now we could go to step two which is going to give us some options to the form. So the first question is, what should people see after they submit your form? And we want them to see a th our thank you page. Now it says, uh, don't get confused over here, it says, show them 
a thank you pay or thank you for your submission page. And if you click here, that's actually going to show them Responsomatics thank you page, not the one that we created. What we want them to see is send them back to your website, and that's exactly right. And we're going to send them back to our thank you page. And you never want to copy and pasting is really the thing over here, and you don't want to mess up the file name. Uh, let's see, I don't have a thanks. I need a thank you. Dot HTML. I need to grab this URL quick. Thanks you. That's the problem. I need thank you. All right. I need to copy this before it refreshes. Okay. So I'm going to take that and put that URL in there. Um, if at this point you're not getting the right URL or you're not sure what it is, you don't have to really sweat it because um, once you copy and paste the code into the into your web page, you could go back into Formalmatic and change some of these values, uh, except for the edit form, which are going to be the questions. But the step two stuff, you could actually change uh, later. So we got that. Send them back to your email. I mean, send them back to your website. And now we do want to receive, under email, we do want to receive a copy of each form submission by email. Otherwise, it's going to go in like Responsomatics inbox. And that's not going to. It's not really what I want to do. You may want to do that. I, I didn't want to do that. So I put in my valid email address because this is going to actually be a stuff coming to me. And as the subject, I'm going to put in yeah, CSS2 form submission. Uh, so that way, the email subject line has this, and I know it's coming from my website. So let me just take a quick gander. You see all this stuff, this upgrade to professional and uh, ask them to confirm stuff and auto response and all that it's all cool and you could have it but upgrade means pay so let's now we just save and continue to step three and inside here is all the code that we need to um, to make the form to copy and paste the form in there so I'm going to select all this I'm going to go to Dreamweaver and Let's get this out of the way and go to my contact page. Here we go. Please keep in touch. Set it up down here. You want to make sure you paste this obviously in in code view, not in design view, because if you paste this in design view, you're just going to get the code in design view, and that's not what you're looking for. So you want to right underneath here. Please keep in touch. Put a boom. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. Here's a fully functional form. The one last thing I'm going to want to do, it says, I don't really like this little advertising text. They're, they're going to see advertising anyway, so I'm just going to cut down on what I can cut down. So down at the bottom it says, get your own free form like this one. Well, that's just some text that when I go back in Dreamweaver, I see um, right, at, right after the form tag ends, is you see a, a line break, a BR. So I'm going to take everything, I'm going to take BR and center tag and all that stuff up until the center tag is closed, but not right above the comment where it says ends responsomatic form. Delete that, save it, preview, looking how I want it. And what I'll do now is since that's the form that changed, I will upload this guy to my website.